Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about season four, episode 21, The Death of Crockett. I mean, deliver us from evil because, you know, he didn't die last week. No, he didn't. <laughs> why, were you, why do you sound disappointed? <laughs> He seemed awful health, healthy in this episode. Like, like nothing, you nothing did, was bothering him. John did predict it. He said last week in the last show that he's like, I bet you're not even going to talk about it. And they didn't say anything about it. It was not brought up at all. No. Not it, even you know, like, it's like where he was, was Caitlin just, <laughs> while you were being shot. It's like he was never shot, shot in the chest. Like, oh. I'm going to bring that up later. It talks about timelines. Yes. How much time has passed in it estimate how much time it took for Sunny to heal <laughs> yeah <laughs> and how long has Caitlin been gone yeah <laughs> so some we'll math doesn't add up that one. <laughs> I, am, I am seriously starting to wonder have they spent more than two days together in their marriage like yeah I, how many days I, married versus apart ha- have we been here now <laughs> they're negative yeah. actually now <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, right after they got married, like, at the end of that episode, she goes to Europe, and then she doesn't come back. Well, this episode is titled Deliver Us From Evil. It's the first of a two-parter to end the season, and Sunny Amnesia is next week. Spoiler! We gotta get there first. <laughs> this episode premiered on April 29th, 1988. It is written by Dick Wolf. I'm, No surprise. <laughs> the director is George Mendeluk. We just saw him. He directed the episode Blood and Roses. That one and this one are the only ones that he directed, so he's back for this episode. Hmm. All right, John. We have some familiar faces in music this week. Something about some episode for forget forgave for, for I can't remember what it is. We got for us this week in music. All right. So yeah, we're gonna start out by like you said, closing Sheena Easton out. So um <laughs> I have already <laughs> Bye, I've already talked about she. <laughs> yes, yes. I have already talked about Sheena Easton in guest stars and in music multiple times. So we are going to wrap this up by just I'm just going to list off a few things I thought I might have left out. So let's start out. Her songs "Don't Turn Your Back" and "Follow My Rainbow" were in the episode in 2017. Join the cast of Lus- London's West End theater show Second Street. And so she's been doing uh, some, like, Broadway acting stuff. She also starred opposite Stacey Keach in the John Carpenter-directed Showtime trilogy, Body Bags. Also, guest starred in the cult syndicated series, The Highlander, which makes a ton of sense now that I know that she's <laughs> Scottish. She's been doing a lot of Broadway-type shows, but the one thing that jumped out at me about Shayna Easton's career, and I know she's a mom, done a lot of voices in cartoons. I had already talked about she was in All Dogs Go to Heaven 2 and in All Dogs Chris Carroll, but I do connect something that has been a theme in my guest stars in music this season. She also provided voice for What's New Scooby-Doo, and Scooby-Doo the Loch Dister. <laughs> Scooby-Doo getting a lot of play here, podcast, in <laughs> season four. In fact, I, I want to say she must have been in one of these with some of our previous guest stars. But I, <laughs> she also did voice for in the Wild Thornberries. She did a voice for Duckman. She was also did a voice for Road Rovers and Gargoyles, which has also really? popped up in a number, number of my music and guest stars. Yeah, she's the bad girl, like the, the villain in Gargoyles. Yeah, yeah, like Banshee or something. Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to challenge Melissa to something? It's not 80s pop history. It's not current who's married to who. It's early 90s cartoons. Yes. Batman, the animated series, <laughs> Justice League, yeah. Gargoyles, the Gummy Bears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know my stuff. <laughs> All right. That's going to bring us to another familiar face. The song, Do What We're Told, which sounds very familiar. <laughs> we have Peter Gabriel. This is Peter Gabriel's sixth appearance in our Vice music, and we still have one to go, so I'm going to have to find even more stuff to talk about Peter Gabriel. <laughs> to talk about what to talk about. Well, turns out, Peter Gabriel, still relevant. I don't know how, I don't know why, <laughs> but his song, In Your Eyes, gets some serious love in Deadpool 2. Really? Uh, I don't know how it worked <laughs> out, but yes, like there is a, not only is the song in the movie, but there is a scene in which like they they 
worked it into the scene. This exact song, We Do What We're Told, pops up in the final season, this this just recent season of The Americans, which was the last season. Wow. It was in the opening episode, Dead Hand, and it's his fourth song in the series. So there's still some Peter Gabriel fans out there in Hollywood. <laughs> so good on you, Peter. Hey, John, I'm going to give you full credit for getting through a Peter Gabriel moment without mentioning Phil Collins. But I'm going to mention Phil Collins <laughs> just to put it in here. Damn it. <laughs> go, go away. Okay, so let's talk about our only actual new artist to our music and probably the biggest artist in our music. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> we get the song Lay's Bones by Hoagie Carmichael whose actual name is Hoagland Howard Carmichael. So yes, oh it's not a nickname. His oh name is God. Hoagland. <laughs> now, to give to give him credit, he was born in 1899. So he, he also lived until 1981, which is impressive. He was named after a circus troupe, the Hoaglands, who <laughs> actually were staying at his parents' house when his mom was pregnant. <laughs> So, Hoagland was an American composer, <laughs> pianist, singer, actor, and band leader. He's actually one of the most successful Tin Pan Alley songwriters. If you are not familiar with the Tin Pan Alley movement, that was from the late 1800s until the uh, mid or to the 1930s. And it was focused on songwriters coming out of a specific area of New York. He composed several hundred songs, including 50 of them achieved hit status. Some of his most famous include Stardust, Georgia On My Mind, The Nearest of You, and Heart and Soul, which are four of the most recorded songs of all time. To take you back that time frame, uh, the, the composers would come up with a melody. So he would he comes up with a piano and all that and, and composes the music. And later on, put together Georgia On My Mind back in the 30s. And then in 1960, Ray Charles put lyrics to it, and the Ray Charles version is probably one of the most famous Ray Charles songs. Even though you may not recognize the song, you would recognize it once if you actually heard it or heard the artist who ended up recording, putting lyrics to it. Actually won an Academy Award for the original song in 1951 with his song In the Cool, Cool, Cool of the Evening. And he also appeared as an actor, musically performed in 14 films. Not only did he act in them, but he actually performed the music in the film. <laughs> He hosted three music variety radio programs during his time. He was also he also did performances on TV and wrote two autobiographies. <laughs> well, you lived long enough, you could do like a first half and a second half. Yeah, yeah. When you live to be eighty-two, you know, uh, yeah. th there's a lot to cover. Like maybe he missed a few things in the last twenty years, <laughs> and he actually has a lot to talk about. He's got an extremely interesting life. Good old Hoagie. Extremely meager beginnings. I mean, he held jobs in construction. He worked at a bicycle chain factory, even a slaughterhouse <laughs> before becoming famous. Okay. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, he earned a law degree in 1926 from the uh, University of Indiana. He actually worked in law until 1929. He just did music on the weekends, but he didn't have his heart in the legal trade. He actually got fired from his firm in 1929 and just went to making music full time. And that actually helped him out because when the Great Depression happened, a considerable amount of his savings, and what saved him was his music, was his composing. That's what got him through the, the, the Great Depression. And that's actually what ended up leading him to writing songs for films and for other artists. Four dozen songs written expressly for motion pictures. And those songs composed were later recorded with lyrics, legendary artists like singers Bing Crosby, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, and I already mentioned Ray Charles. When I was getting my notes together for this episode, when I saw Peter Gabriel and Sheena Easton, I'm like, okay, we already talked about them a bunch, and I saw Hoagie. I'm like, I can't wait to find out about Hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so his on-screen debut as an actor was in 1937, the movie Hopper started in that with Cary Grant and Constance Bennett and even performed the song, his song, Old Man Moon. By 1942, when the war broke out, he started writing wartime songs and regularly toured with the USO. Around that same time, he also moved into the former mansion of chewing gum error 
William P. Wrigley Jr., which <laughs> I was unaware that Wrigley Field and the Chicago Cubs were previously owned by a chewing gum. <laughs> It makes me wonder if we just narrowly escaped some type of Bazooka Joe idiom. <laughs> In 1967, the Guinness Book of World Records listed them of having the longest song title. The song was called, I'm a cranky old yank in a cranky old tank on the streets of Yokohama with my Honolulu mama <laughs> doing the, those... B O B O flat on my C O Hirohito Blues. <laughs> that was the name of the song. So and he actually said it was a joke and it was actually supposed to end the game with Yank. <laughs> so in 1955, at this point, well into acting and performing on screen, he reprised the role of Sam the Piano Man in the short lived TV adaptation of Cost of Casablanca. Other roles that you that he's famous for playing is he played Jonesy the Ranch Hand in season one of the Western Laramie in 1959. He also provided the voice for a parody of himself called Stony Carmichael in an episode of The Flintstones in 1961. <laughs> in 1971, he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame along with Ellington. And pretty much after that, he didn't didn't do a ton. I mean, he released a couple autobiographies. He even later in life said that he feels like he wasted some of the end of his life because he could have got a lot more accomplished. But, I mean, accomplished a pretty pretty good amount. So, if you didn't know who Hoagland Howard Carmichael was before, <laughs> now you know the most famous Hoagland. <laughs> <laughs> Hoagie delivered. It was what? Everything I was hoping it would be. When I saw, like I said, when I saw Gabriel and Easton, I'm like, Hoagie Man, this is all on you. <laughs> You're getting and, the spotlight. And he delivered. And that's going to do it for us this week. This is a very dark way to end this episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at go with the heat, Instagram at go with the heat, Facebook.com slash go with the heat. You can pretty much find us anywhere and everywhere. Go with the heat. You know how to get a hold of us. Check out that website, go with the heat.com. Where else is it going to be? You can click on subscribe. You can find all the ways to find this show. So if you're listening to an RSS, you want to get us on Pocket Cast or YouTube or TuneIn, Google Podcasts. You want to yell at your tubes in your house and have the have the speaker play the stuff. Just yell at it. Hey, so-and-so. Hey, G-Man. Hey, Echo. Play the latest Miami Vice podcast. Just yell at it. Go in other people's windows. Just scream it into their house. They will appreciate it when they hear our great podcast of Miami Vice. Just do us a favor. Go ahead and do that. The second favor you can do for us, go review our podcast on your podcast, your platform of choice, especially iTunes. If you happen to listen to us through the Apple podcast, go there and leave a review. Just give us five stars. Go ahead. Just give us all five stars. No one will even know that I asked you to do that. But don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews to the show. Instead, pick your side. Team Blue, Team Red, Team Cap, Team Iron Man. Melissa or John, <laughs> whose side are you on here when it comes to gun placement? Was it planted or did Hackman have it the entire time? Go ahead and write that in your review. Support step number three that you can do for us is check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. If you ran into us at an airport and you would buy us a beer, that's $15. You support us a dollar a month on Patreon. That's $12 a year. Your boy Dahmer's got your back. He's saving you $3 a year by supporting <laughs> us on Patreon. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal. <laughs>